So it's come to my attention that I'm not cool anymore. How did this epiphany come about? Well, I have a younger brother and we played games a lot to hang out. I've been realizing that I haven't even heard of half the popular music artists out there anymore, and I came to an all-time low, there's a band I know, when I had to go to Urban Dictionary to find out what no cap means. By the way, for those that have fallen out of the hip crowd like me, it means that something isn't a lie. And that is no cap. Actually, I'm back, baby! Hey. What's up? You're my brother, and that's no cap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so am I cool? No. F <laughs> I'm 26, so I'm far from old, but I can tell that the cool kid club party has pretty much come to an end. There are two great benefits to this aging process, though. First, my everyday pants have gotten much more comfortable. They're loose. I'm more mobile in them. They're not cool, but I feel great. The second benefit is that people my age grew up with some great computer games. Games that were developed to be fun for hours. Games before microtransactions. Games before day one patches. One of these great games was The Sims from Maxis and EA Games. That's right kids, EA used to actually put out decent games that didn't require you to go see a psychiatrist afterwards after witnessing a mutilation of a good franchise at the hands of microtransactions. Anyway, the Sims was released for the PC in February of 2000. It kicked off a beloved and record-breaking series that has estimated to sell over 200 million copies throughout the series and to generate, as of the last count in October 2019, over 5 billion dollars in sales. Now I know, I know, I'm such a great salesman and you can't wait for this video to end so you can run out and play this game. Us millennials want to go pay for yet another shot of nostalgia. Time for that weekly fix. The younger viewers are thinking, whoa, I've got to experience how this old guy survived childhood without a cell phone. Unfortunately, it's not going to be that easy. I don't really know of any reputable vendors for digital distribution, and I never really advocate for downloading something free from a shady looking site. My mom always said, downloading software was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Also, EA has ceased the distribution of physical copies. Fortunately, you can still find physical copies, some in the box, on eBay. Hooray! We're ready now, right? Well, no. You see, when a game is being developed, those making it are creating it for a specific operating system. This is the reason that you can't play a single disc on a PS4 and an Xbox One, even though the end result is more or less the same. When The Sims came out, the current operating system from Microsoft was Windows 98. So the game was developed in the Windows 95, 98 era, but now we have Windows 10. If you're watching this and you're thinking, well, well I still have Windows 7, well, you've been very naughty. It's past end of life, and it's time to upgrade. The problem with trying to play The Sims on Windows 10 is it's the same as going to a kid today and asking them to put the VHS in a VCR. They're gonna look at you with a confused look, say, okay, boomer, and start flossing uncontrollably. Windows 10 just isn't going to play a game this old, so we're going to have to travel back in software time to the beloved Windows XP. And the millennials rejoice. For now, they have received not just one, but two fixes of nostalgia. Some say Windows 7 works, but I haven't found this to be reliable. If you don't have a Windows XP machine lying around, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to run Windows XP for free using a virtual machine. This is a really easy process. So let's go to the lab. Hey everyone, you made it and welcome back to the lab. We've got a Windows 10 machine right here. We've got our always needed coffee. And now I'm going to show you step by step how to set up that Windows XP virtual machine for free so you can play that sweet, sweet Sims. So on the computer here, we're going to use a software from Oracle called VirtualBox. Again, this is free. And all these items that I show you here, other than the game itself, they're all going to be free. I'm going to link them in the description below so you can get them from the proper source so you're not downloading any viruses and so you can do this yourself. Again, all for free. So VirtualBox is basically a free virtualization product that allows you to run virtual machines on your Windows machine. You can also get this for Linux 
or Mac. Today we're going to be doing it from Windows 10. So I already have this downloaded. This is what it's going to look like. Very simple. I don't have any virtual machines on this device right now. So we're going to build that from the ground up. Another tool that we're going to want to get for this project is a free open source tool called 7-Zip. And you can get it from 7-Zip.org. This is a Windows application. I already have this installed as well. So we won't need to go through that. And the last thing we want to get is that Windows XP operating system. Now, Microsoft no longer distributes and they no longer support Windows XP. So what we're going to do is download something called Windows XP mode and we're going to build the operating system out of that. Build probably being a strong word, we're going to change something around and be able to run in VirtualBox. But what you're going to do is go to the link. It's going to be in the description below, but here's what it looks like. This is straight from Microsoft, so we know it's safe. Windows XP mode, you're going to go to download. I'm going to select this one here, Windows XP mode underscore en dash us dot exe. And so this is an exe file, so don't run this. An exe typically is something that you use on a Windows machine that runs some kind of program. That's not what we're going to want to do with this file. We're going to want to take something out of it to use as a virtual hard disk on that virtual machine. So download this don't run it wait for the next step and I already have it so I'm not gonna hit next I'm gonna close out and I'll just bring up my downloads here here we have it that I downloaded the other day and I also created a Windows XP folder that we can extract the needed files into this folder for so I'm gonna right click on it and here's where 7-zip comes into play I'm gonna go to 7-zip I'm gonna go to open archives and I'm gonna select cab C A B that's going to bring up the 7-zip window. It looks kind of like Explorer, a little bit different. I'm going to go to Sources. I'm going to go to XPM. And here are the files that I'm going to need. Now, the state that these files are in right now, they're read only. So I can't do anything with them. I can't do what I need to do. So this is where 7-zip is going to extract those files and basically make copies of them so I can modify them how I need them to be. So on 7-zip, I'm going to go to Extract. I'm going to hit these three dots. And this is where I created that window. Windows XP folder. We're going to select that and we're going to extract them to there. Boom. All done. So let's go to Explorer and let's go to the Windows XP folder. And here we are. These are the files that I'm going to need for this project. So what I'm going to do now that they're not read only, I can come to this one here, Virtual XP VHD, and I can hit F2 to rename. And I'm going to put a period between Virtual XP and VHD. So this tells the system that this is the file name and then it tells the system that after this period, this is the file extension. So this is the type of file that this is going to be. So when I hit enter, it now realizes this file as a virtual hard disk. This is what we're going to be able to use in VirtualBox to launch Windows XP on a virtual machine. So now that I have that, I'm ready to go and start building the virtual machine. I'm going to go and bring up VirtualBox. I'm going to hit new and I'm going to call this Gimme Them Sims. And it's going to go to my user folder under a folder called VirtualBox VMs. I'm fine with that. That's where it can go. It's going to be Microsoft Windows and the version. It's not going to be seven. We're going to go for XP. And we go ahead and hit next. Here is the memory size. This is where we allocate RAM for this virtual machine. So these virtual machines are simulating hardware and it can't just pull the resources out of thin air. So I need to allocate portions of the physical RAM that's sitting inside my laptop for this virtual machine. So this is XP, it's not gonna be too intense, but I do have a fair amount of RAM on here. So I'll go ahead and give it a gig, that should be good for us. And we're gonna use an existing virtual hard disk. I'm gonna open this up here, click add, select the virtual XP virtual hard disk, open it, I'm gonna choose that. Hit create, boom, and there you go. Now technically you have a virtual machine now that is ready to run. We're gonna take a few extra steps though. So with this machine highlighted, I'm gonna go to the settings and I'm gonna go to the system. I'm gonna go to the acceleration tab. Now with Windows XP, this is a invalid configuration. So I'm just gonna go and disable this checkbox here, enable VT-X slash AMD-X. 
V. And then another thing I want to do is go to storage and add optical drive. Now what I'm doing here is the Sims is on a physical CD. I didn't download this from an online vendor and I can't play it that way. So I have to let this virtual machine read that CD. Now my laptop doesn't actually have a CD drive built into it. I have an external one over here, but just plugging that in. And even if it had one built in, the virtual machine doesn't automatically grab that resource. We have to share physical resources with the virtual machine so it's recognizing that in the virtual environment so what I'm gonna do here is I already see it here is the e-drive I go ahead and click on that click on choose and there we go so when I launch this virtual machine that should be mounted I should be able to run CDs that are physically inserted here in the virtual environment. I'm also gonna come down to network and I'm going to disable this. This is obviously an unsecure version of an operating system. It's very old, it's not supported anymore and I don't have any need for this to be connected to the internet. So we're going to kill that network adapter and I'll hit okay to save those settings and this should be ready to go. So I'm gonna double click on the virtual machine and it'll take one second and now it is launching. So this is going to look like a brand new machine out of the box. Like you had just bought a Windows XP desktop, plugged it into a wall and turned it on for the first time. So it's gonna take us through those initial configurations. Cause as far as this virtual environment is concerned, this is a brand new piece of hardware, first time plugged in. All right, so I'm gonna hit input. I'm gonna hit mouse integration. And now when I click on here, I can capture my mouse. Important thing is to know what your home key is, or it might get a little annoying. If you look at the screen here, I can't exit the machine. So VirtualBox has what's called the home key for mine. It's the right control key for this Windows keyboard. If I hit that, then I can move my mouse outside of the virtual machine again. But let's go back. Sure, I'll accept this user agreement and I'll just leave that how it is. All right, the computer name, Sims, please and the admin password and the time of day probably won't matter because I'm not connecting to any network resources where this is going to need to match up with anything. But hey, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. All right. So automatic updates, I'm going to go ahead and turn off automatic updates and it's going to finish up the initial setup for this user account and it's going to be the administrator. So those updates, Microsoft is never going to build an update for XP again, unless you're a larger entity and you're paying them an extreme amount of dollars. But I doubt anybody's going to be paying them for XP updates just to play the Sims. So I'm assuming none of you are gonna fall within that category. And here we are, this is Windows XP and let the nostalgia commence. We have the old school games, Free Cell, Hearts, Pinball. If you're my age, you remember killing hours and hours on this game in the computer lab after they blocked all the Flash game websites, waiting for your parents to come pick you up for school. But here we go. One of the last things that we need to configure, 30 days left for activation. So this operating system isn't in distribution anymore and it's not supported anymore. So I can't just really go get a legitimate key for this. What we're gonna do is just make a couple registrations changes and run a command so it looks like it's activated for this virtual machine again I'm not rolling this out in a business environment I'm not really using it for any commercial or even personal reasons I'm just getting a system that can run a game so we're just gonna get it to where this is usable I'm gonna be back in just a couple minutes after I set up some files to show you how we can get this done all right so welcome back and let's take a look at the screen and let me show you what we're gonna do to activate this version of Windows X P. All right, so on here I have activation and this is a .reg file and when you run something like this it makes changes to your Windows registry. Now what is the registry? Basically this is the end all be all of what the settings are on your machine. So the operating system, different software that you have on the system, basically anything that you want configured you can change with registry keys. So if we run this we're gonna say yes, okay, and it has been successfully entered into the registry. So let's take a look at what that was. We're gonna open with the notepad, and here's what that file actually said. So HK Local Machine Software Microsoft Windows NT current version WPA events is the location of where this is. And then the OOBE timer is what we're gonna be changing. So let's take a look at that. Let's run 
reg edit. So these are all the different keys that we can modify to make changes on our account. Now be careful in here. Don't go messing around willy nilly. You can mess up your system big time by doing that. But we're going to look here. H key local machine. We'll drop that down. Software. We'll drop that down. Microsoft will drop that down Windows NT as you can see there's a lot of different things you can modify under the Microsoft folder Windows NT current version and WPA events and here we go we'll click on that folder and here's the OO BE timer we can see that those settings were changed to what we define them as in this file here and then the last thing we're going to do we'll close these out is we're going to bring up the command prompt so in here i just have a text document copy this command again link is going to be in the description with a copy of all these items so you can do them yourself but we'll go ahead and copy we'll paste it here and there we go windows is activated i'll say it's already activated so when we made that registry edit that activated the windows and then now we are checking it to make sure that it's done properly so windows when it runs a check against itself it is now seeing that this is activated so it shouldn't lock you out after 30 days so you can play the sims right here for years and years to come so what we're going to do now is go ahead and install the sims on this system we'll go to start we'll go to my computer and we see the sims here so i'll go ahead and double click on it so this should be the installer i'm going to go with english and there we go install we'll go ahead and go through the old install window going to leave everything the same serial number so when looking for a copy of the sims i recommend that you find one with a box because that serial number that it's asking for is actually on a sticker on the inside here so if you don't want to look for a workaround on this and crack this software then i just recommend you go ahead and get one with the serial number intact so you can just enter it here that's what i'm gonna do all right so i entered the serial number it's starting to install the game onto the system and this is probably gonna take a few minutes All right, so it has copied the files onto this computer. We're going to register later and it has finished installing. We're going to hit finish. We now have the play button. Now, if you're on a Windows 7 machine, this is where I typically find that it crashes no matter what I do and no matter how many tutorials I follow. But Windows XP, it typically works at this spot. So we're going to go for it. We're going to play the low resolution. And here we go. The entry scene here and we are in the game. I can go to Sims Lane, go ahead and click OK, and now you can start playing The Sims. So now there's a billion things you can do from here, but I'm not going to tell you what to do because that's the whole point of The Sims. You can do whatever you want. But now you have a working Windows XP virtual machine on your Windows 10 device. You can run The Sims from your external CD-ROM drive. You can get it to run and to work. And this is an activated version of Windows so you don't hit a roadblock in 30 days. So now go forth. Have as much fun as you want. And remember all the good times as a kid before the stresses of the world started beating us down. That's it for today. If you're going to go get The Sims and build this machine, go ahead and hit that like button and leave a comment below about how much you like The Sims or your other favorite games from this era of computer gaming. If you're new here or you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can see the new videos every week. It's greatly appreciated as we try to grow this channel. Thanks to all those that have subscribed so far and left comments on my previous videos. It makes me super happy to see it, it makes this all worthwhile, and I really, really appreciate it. Hopefully we can keep growing together. Let me know what you want to learn about next. I'm Cole. And I'll see you in the next one.